Why do pre-emerge herbicides fail? That's our topic today. Well, okay, Brian. We really encourage the use of pre-emerge herbicides in crops like corn and soybeans and wheat and many more. And oftentimes we're saying, hey, this is the key, this is the key. But every once in a while we get some feedback from growers saying, well, it didn't work for me. What's going on in my field? We're gonna talk about some of the common things that happen to really impact the performance negatively of these pre-emerge herbicides and then what you can do to overcome them. First thing I wanna talk about is unrealistic expectations. So this has nothing to do with the herbicide failing or succeeding. It's just all what you have in your mind and what you think you should get out of that herbicide. Here's where I'm going with this. If you have 100 weeds in the field and you get 99.9% .9 control, how many of those weeds are dead? Well, probably all of them, every single one of them. So it looks great and you say, boy, I'm super happy. Okay, now let's say you have a million weeds in the field. If you have 99.9% .9 control, what do you have left in the field? Well, you still have an awful lot of weeds left out there and you go, oh, the herbicide didn't work. Well, actually the herbicide worked better than it's even promised to work because a lot of times they'll talk about 80%, 90%, maybe 95% control. If you got 99.9, .9, well, you should be super happy. So what I'm getting at here is you need to look at long-term weed control. We find this evident all around the country. Most of the complaints on herbicides come from fields that have had a historic issue. If you let weeds go to seed, you're going to be fighting that for many years to come. All right, there are so many factors here with pre-emerge herbicides. I'm gonna start with timing of application. One of the big things with the timing of application is you need to be out there before those weeds are really growing. So if you've already got weeds that are up and you're putting out a herbicide that has no contact activity, but it has good soil residual activity, you're too late. Uh, for example, let's say you're putting out metolachlor and you've already got grass that's up. Well, it's not going to have a whole lot of reach back activity to kill those emerged grasses, but it will do a nice job stopping weeds as they're germinating below the soil. So the timing becomes real critical. Well, the timing is always going to be critical, but a lot of people are counting on rain and they say, hey, if I can just get rain pretty soon after, then that's going to get into that plant and it might even have a little bit of reach back. Well, look, here's the whole thing. We don't know what Mother Nature is going to do tomorrow or the next day or next week, and that gets to be the real problem. So ideally what we're after here and, and what I would tell you is if you've got a pre-emerge herbicide, how does that go into the weed? Well, if you look at like the yellows, for example, they are root inhibitors. They're going to go in through the roots. You've got a lot of products, like Darren mentioned Metolical or Dual, and many, many other herbicides are shoot inhibitors, so they go into the shoot, which is also below ground. Okay, so if you've got herbicides that need to be below ground and you have them above ground, well, what do you think is going to happen? You've got to have decent rainfall to get them not only into the ground, but into the plant. If you were to incorporate, and I mean lightly incorporate, most pre-emerge herbicides, they're going to work better with less rainfall simply because now we have placed them where they need to be. All we need is a little soil moisture to get them into the plant. All right, so shallow incorporation is sure nice with many products, but what if you get them too deep? Now you've got product that's down, say, three or four inches deep, and you're trying to kill weeds that are germinating in the top half inch. Well, you've diluted the concentration down so much in that top half inch that you just don't have a lethal dose to kill that weed. So you have to be real cautious about deep tillage. The other thing along those lines is, let's say you did some deep tillage in your field, then you sprayed the pre-emerge herbicide out there and you're trying to just come in and lightly incorporate after that. If you've got some big ridges and valleys out through the field, you're gonna have herbicide depth all over the place and you're gonna have erratic control. Okay, so don't get us wrong here. We're not saying don't incorporate many of these herbicides. I love them incorporated. It's just very, very lightly that's the key. All right, the other key is picking the right herbicide to begin with. We talked to a lot of guys, like let's take wheat, for example, that say, well, man, I used that pre-emerge treatment of Sharpen, but I didn't get much help on my downy brome. Well, of course you didn't. Sharpen is a broadleaf herbicide and you're trying to kill a grass. The same thing happens in soybeans where, well, I put this pre out, I put a group 15 out, but I didn't get great broadleaf control. Hey, group 15s do have some level of small seeded broadleaf control, but they're better at controlling grasses than they are small seeded broadleaves. That's why we talk about our three different pre's and we talk about using things like Metribuzin and the PPOs that are really good broadleaf killers that work a little bit better on those target weeds than the group 15s do.
The last thing I guess I'd mention is weed resistance. So when you look at the label on a lot of herbicides, they're gonna give you all these different weeds that they control, except for if that weed builds up tolerance. So that's something you've gotta figure out for your farm. And obviously, if you've got weed resistance, you're gonna to have to switch different modes of action. That might still mean you use the same product, but you may have to use additional products to get those resistant weeds. Well, we sure like pre-emerge herbicides. We use them on every acre of our farm every season, but there certainly can be some failures if you fall out in one of the areas that we talked about today, not getting rain at the right time or not getting the herbicide incorporated at the right depth or even choosing the right herbicide to begin with. So hey, you have one, to be careful to make yeah, sure they hey, work. Hey, one last thing, since Darren mentioned that rain again, I would just say, if let's say you're in no-till or you've got strip-till or something like that where you can't incorporate and you're really worried about rain because you're in a dry area of the country, if you can, try to apply these products super early. We've done a lot of applications in March. Boy, that really makes a difference because now I've got a month, maybe a month and a half to get rainfall on before my weeds start coming up. If it's going to be tomorrow when the weeds come up, you don't have a lot of time to get that rain. So that's one of the things I want you to think about if you can't incorporate or if you're in a dry area of the country. Now, all those things are important to remember if you're trying to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.